And hello and welcome to episode 123 of On The Bench, the podcast for scale modelers, by scale modelers, all about scale models. And in this episode of the show, we're going to be looking at movies and TV series that inspire us to build. Of course, we've also got Mailbag. We're going to hear from the Falcon with his news reports. And we're going to be seeing what Julian and Ian have been getting up to. So let's have a word from our sponsor and then we'll be on with the show. Established in 2016, the Scale Modeler Supply has developed a comprehensive range of premium acrylic lacquer paints designed specifically with the Scale Modeler in mind. Certified Australian made, SMS paints are tough and durable with a fast drying time that have been designed to use straight from the bottle, taking all the guesswork out of airbrushing. Simply shake and spray. The ever-growing range of SMS paints will suit all types of model builders, be it military, aircraft, cars, train, science fiction, or gumpla. SMS premium acrylic lacquer paints will have a color to suit you. SMS products are available through a trusted network of stores across Australia, New Zealand, Singapore, the US, and are also now available for the first time in the UK Froom Model Center. Check the SMS website at www.scalemodeler.com.au to find your closest stockist. These paints are on my bench and I use them all the time, so I know that you will not be disappointed. And hello and welcome to the show. And I'm joined, of course, by Ian. G'day, Dave. G'day, Julian. And g'day, listeners. Oh, and Julian, how are you, mate? Yeah, good morning. <laughs> it's it's morning, yeah. Well... Oh, it's a miserable looking day. <laughs> and welcome to the show from the world's newest minted seventh naval power to soon be operating nuclear-powered warships. Woohoo! Yeah, okay. <laughs> Come on, dude, this is huge news. I first yeah, I first cut my teeth and I got back in the modelling on submarines. And so the fact that um, the Australian government has now announced that we are going to have nuclear-powered submarines and we yet to find out whether it's going to be the Astute class built in the UK or the Virginias built in the, U- the US, this is huge news. So... That means I can now go back out and buy another Virginia class and another Astute and do it in Australian what-if colours or potential Australian colours. Well, there's a what-if to begin with, so you could have done that at any point in time. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Well, that's true, but, you know, the the chances of us ever sort of having a nuclear-powered submarine, well, back in 2016 when we first sort of went down this path of a replacement for the Collins class submarines. It just it just wasn't on the table, and um, now that we've upset upset the um, the French by cancelling the contract and going with a, a, a nuclear option, um, yeah, from from a modelling point of view, um, I reckon that's just absolutely awesome and, and incredibly exciting. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, well. <laughs> God, you two you guys are so enthused, Ian. and I'm like, yeah, okay. Oh, come on, Ian. I thought you, as a fellow sub submarine builder, would have really appreciated. I'm a fellow sub builder, but yeah, I just look at us having nuclear submarines and thinking, well, what does the future entail if we're going to need nuclear powered subs? As for me, I've not built a sub and have no real desire to, so it should be pretty <laughs> pretty clear where I. <laughs> how, how little I care about this. I mean, I, I don't. I didn't care about the F thirty five when we we got our hands on that. Oh. Yes, I, I'm not into all this modern stuff, Dave. So I couldn't care less. Oh, I well, am, I'm so uh, into. It. I well, love it. Well, I wouldn't say I'm 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 not into. I, I I can take it or leave it when it comes to modern stuff. It doesn't bother me. I've built a T ninety, and that's as far as. Modern Russian tanks go, I suppose. Real tanks, not like the weird, you know, like that thing that they showed and then they decided not to build because it was too expensive or whatever. (laughs) (laughs) 
Um, I don't know. Like, if there was a decent kit, I wouldn't mind buy, building a, a Eurofighter Typhoon. Um, just because I like things with canards that lately look sci fi. <laughs> Um, but like, yeah, anyway, m- most modern subjects don't, don't really interest me, but I can be convinced to build it if it's a good model. If it's a quality model that has good engineering on it, I'll build it just for the sake of building it. Cause I, I like playing with good models. <laughs> well, that makes me wonder how come you haven't bought the Tamiya, um, Phantom yet? Oh, but I've just finished building a Phantom. Yeah, but this, this is the Tamiya so one. This is, this is the bee's knees. Yeah, but I'll be like, oh, <laughs> this is the same canopy and this is the same fuselage and eh. It'll go to better it'll go together better than the one you built. Oh, of course. Of course it will. <laughs> but <laughs> it's there's still a familiarity about it. Like I don't I, I'm always looking for newer experiences in modeling, not not the same ones. Mm. So I'm trying, I think the last F four Phantom I built would have been probably about thirty years ago, and that was one of the Hasegawa forty eight scale ones. And, well, I remember they weren't too bad for their day. Mm. Mm. Which right. reminds me, there's a um, uh, the model geeks are doing a uh, a group build of the scooter open to all and sundry. So yeah. I was thinking, look, mm. if, if someone ever puts out a um, the ones we used in our navy, I'd buy one in forty eight scale. But as Julian knows, you just can't find them. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Which is a real well, In other news, mm-hmm. I haven't built anything this week because uh, I've been uh, getting destroyed by work, and uh, also got my second jab, which made put me under the weather. To your double yep. jab, woohoo! Yeah. Well, no, at least that's out of the way for mm-hmm. a while. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> So you need your booster? Yeah, until next time. Yeah, until next time. Yep. Oh, well, you're but, boring. Uh, you're, you're very boring then, Julian. <laughs> I'm very boring because I haven't built anything <laughs> for feeling like uh, under the weather. Oh, yeah, okay. You know what? Every, 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 every time I ever have to take a day off work for, a, you know, because I'm sick or something, I always think, well, I get to take a day off work and I probably won't be that sick. And then I end up so sick that I'm not able to do anything, and it's a real disappoint, disappointing thing, you know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Ian, what have you been doing? Then let's see if you've been holding the team up. Um, I think I, have I mentioned that I've pretty much finished the um, Canadian machine gun carrier. Yes, I think you did last episode. Yeah. So I've uh, started on the figures, um, airbrushed all the skin tones because I wanted to get really nice. Um, gradients, um, did all the block painting of all the base colours and then decided while I was doing the two characters for the uh, for the machine gun carry, I'd grab all the uh, Tory models, uh, tank girls and put them all together and started doing the skin tones and the block colours on them and <laughs> got right into it, started getting all my oil paints out so I could start doing some blending and then got an email from Blizzard Entertainment telling me that Diablo 2 has just been released and that was the end of my modelling weekend. <laughs> that was you gone. <laughs> oh, jeez. Well. But I think it's a modelling done. I, I, I would like to say that I've um, been carrying the team, but I haven't because I've been incredibly busy with work. Um, we've had some interesting weather that's come across in the last couple of days. And we had yeah, a, a, a huge, uh, yeah, been crazy, all right. We had a huge um, uh, earthquake that uh, yes. rocked us 5.9, which is yeah. for this part of the world is incredibly large and crazy. And we were it was lucky. the largest earthquake recorded in our history mm. in our area. In our area, yes. There have been some sixes and even sevens. I think the sevens have been off the coast uh, along Western Australia. A couple of big sixes up in the um, middle of nowhere. But yeah. we were incredibly lucky because this was only a depth of 10 k's, but it was about 120 kilometres away from Melbourne itself. So if it had been another 50 k's closer in, we would have had a huge amount of damage. So... We really dodged a big bullet. And I was sitting right in the middle of a video conference with all my work colleagues when it went off. So it was 
Very bizarre. I was in, I was in the middle of the, I was in the warehouse, and all of a sudden all the pallet racking started moving. I, <laughs> I just yelled out, "Out!" <laughs> I was out in the middle of the car park, away from anything that could fall on me. Within about thirty seconds, I was gone. I was when those pallet racks started wobbling. <laughs> I'm thinking, no, there's tons of equipment up there. I'm not standing underneath it. Yeah, smart move. What about you, yeah. Julian? Where were you when the great quake hit? In bed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we didn't even feel it. <laughs> I, I woke up. It woke me up, and I was like, oh, that's an earthquake. <laughs> it's, get, it's getting a little strong. I'm like, Maybe I should go outside. But I was feeling really comfy because I'd just woken up, so I decided that I wasn't... <laughs> <laughs> weighing up comfort or safety. Well, if you're gonna yeah. if you're gonna die, you might as well die in comfort. So yeah, <laughs> dying in bed sounds like a good idea. <laughs> well, I mean, like, there's not that much stacked around me, right? So at the worst, like maybe the bookshelf would come down, and then like any models of model boxes I've got up there might fall on me. And I'm really not gonna <laughs> die from a model model box to the head. <laughs> Yeah, well, the, only, the only thing that I found is when I got home from work, there was a few, like, knickknacks and things that had fallen on the ground, and that was about it. Yeah, I didn't, no damage here at home. So there's a couple of properties in Melbourne that got damaged. Some of the um, brick facades dropped off a, a couple of buildings. But um, yep. by and large, we were pretty lucky. And, we uh, were, considering how much grief this state's been copped. Oh, yeah. And then, <laughs> what uh, next? Yeah, and then a couple of big tornadoes ripped through New South Wales yesterday. We've had yep. uh, flash flooding up in the north of the city last night. And oh, goodness. Anyway, um, any other thing, a reason why I haven't been building um, this week, apart from being busy with work, is I went and bought a new TV. And because I was getting really ticked off that I couldn't watch Apple TV on my old TV. So I went and bought a new TV that has the is you know um, modern enough that you can get the app on it and everything so which will lead us to talk about what we're talking about today shows and movies that inspire us in modeling but um i've also been sort of sitting watching all the cool shows on apple tv but i'll, I'll leave that for later because that's what we're going to talk about later on but uh yeah and man haven't tvs come down in price 1200 bucks 65 centimeter tv with all the bells and whistles on it yeah, that's pretty cheap. I know. Hmm. And the 55 centimeter one I replaced, I mean, I think I paid about three grand for that um, <laughs> back in 2017. So just go to show how technology is moving at a fast, rapid pace. It is, yes. And it's only for our benefit as well. Yep. Okay. What should we dive into? Um, how about we have a look at uh, some mail stuff? How does that sound? I say a bit of sure. listening. Oh, sounds good. It does. Before we do that, we'll have a quick word from Fine Scale Modeler, one of our sponsors, and we'll be back very shortly. <laughs> Whether you build aircraft, armour, ships, science fiction, cars or figures, the Fine Scale Modeler magazine provides the how-to information you need to take your modelling to the next level. In each issue of Fine Scale Modeler, you'll find clear how-to features on model assembly and finishing written by experts, reviews of the hottest model kits and products, tips and techniques for assembling, painting and finishing, as well as inspiring photos of readers' models. To find out how you can get your copy of Fine Scale Modeler, go to www.finescale.com. Okay, so we're back to have a look at some mail items. And if you remember the last show, we were we had an email uh, about a chap who said that a friend of his had done some modelling with food, and um, <laughs> we got, oh yes. yes, we got a couple of emails in about um, how people use food in their modelling, which is really really funny. Uh, so. Um, Paul Paul Karate writes in. He says, "I've used coffee as a wash. It worked well and serves me well as my modelling fluid." 
<laughs> the the only question I've got, I guess, Paul, is it um, is it percolated coffee or is it um, instant coffee? I'd really like to know what sort of coffee it was. But that's interesting. Yeah. Coffee is a wash. Co- coffee, but yeah, but co- coffee is kind of reasonable because it's always like a, a brown liquid, and you know, brown liquids go a long way in modelling, right? Yeah, that's true. And for I know that the guys who build sailing ships. Um, the cloth sails that come in those wooden kits, they'll actually soak them in um, tea because it gives a nice sort of patina and stains the the um, the sails in a sort of realistic way. So Yeah, I've heard of that one done, yeah. Yeah, but using coffee's a wash. I'm, I mean, Wouldn't it get sticky? That's well, my question. Yeah. And attract ants. Depends. You would, I suppose, if you're using it for a wash, you wouldn't put sugar in it. <laughs> well, no, black, no. That's what would attract the ants is the sugar. Yeah, it'd just be black. It and also, maybe like if you didn't add sugar, it'd probably take the, the stickiness out of it, would it? Yeah, too, yeah that's a good point. Mm. But no, I think I'll just stick with my oil washes. <laughs> <laughs> they seem to work well for me. <laughs> Well, speaking of washes, isn't there a uh, formula to use like, and I hate to use the word, but it's um, that floor polish and you mix it with some colours and just sort of pour it in and it's like a magic wash. Yeah, I oh, could be. You guys heard of that one? Uh, yeah, I think I have. Mm. I'm not a fan of sludge washes. Aren't you? No, where you, where you cover the whole thing and then you have to wipe it all off. I like to more control my washes. Ah, fair enough. It takes a lot longer, but at least I don't have to spend an hour trying to clean this sludge <laughs> off. <laughs> All right, Mark uh, Inman writes in, uh, G'day, guys, long-time listener and thoroughly enjoying the show. Just listening to the latest pod and someone wrote in about wet spaghetti, this reminded me about a time I used dry spaghetti. Back in my previous modelling life, I used to hang all my aircraft in the ceiling and had an old matchbox Victor tanker refueling a couple of buccaneers behind it. I used the dry spaghetti as the hose and the probe and drogue system trailing from the back of the refueling pods down to the basket, which was placed against the refueling probe of the buccaneers. Being young, the spaghetti was never painted, but filled the job perfectly. I also didn't have to worry about breakages, as all I had to do was go downstairs and raid the kitchen for some replacements. <laughs> That's cheers from Mark. That's good thinking. <laughs> Gee, the, the old Matchbox Victor. Wow. Yeah. I used That's to love on. the Matchbox kits. Yeah, the two two different coloured plastic. Yeah, and absolutely. The, and the panel and the and, and the recessed panel lines that were like a ten foot wide. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Scott Gentry writes in, a very good friend of ours, and of course is um, over on the um, Plastic Posse podcast. Yes. Uh, he says, hey guys, enjoyed your last episode a lot, especially especially the modelling food segment. I have a good friend who built a Jerry Rutman 132nd Dauntless kit that was missing exhaust. Since the kit was long out of production, no replacements could be sourced. So my friend, who was an engineer, and using his engineering eye, figured out that a perfect drop-in would be sourced from dry... Now let me get this right. Ditelliani, which is elbow macaroni noodles. The dry macaroni was installed and glued in place, painted, and they look great. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> if it works, it works. Oh, if it works and if it's it got works. a coat of paint on it, it's protected. Well, that's true. <sighs> well, that's we, all, that's all we got from people who write. Sorry, I said we modelers can sometimes be quite resourceful. <laughs> we can. Uh, uh, sorry, I'm not. La- I, I'm laughing because I'm, I'm pretty sure. Um, Dave probably butchered the pronunciation of something somewhere in there. <laughs> yeah, the Italian word for elbow macaroni. <laughs> so, you know, it is what it is. Uh, anyway, next one comes from 
Kieran Young. <laughs> this makes me laugh, uh, reading this out. It says, hi, Dave. I'm just listening to episode 122, and you were talking about pl- applying gold metal leaf to plastic. It sounds like you are making a total dog's breakfast of it. And it is bloody frustrating listening to you go around in circles. <laughs> <laughs> Are you using gold leaf or the Dutch metal? The Dutch metal is a bit thicker and will tarnish. No, I'm not using the Dutch metal. I'm actually using the proper gold leaf. Kieran says, to cut the gold, use a straight-bladed knife, for example, an old butter knife, and make yourself, um, uh, this is a bloke covered in a piece of, of leather chamois. So I'm what I'm what he's saying there is you sort of make like a, a, a little stand and you cover it in with the, the leather chamois on top and then you put the gold onto that. To pick up the gold use flat long hair brush and rub it against your cheek to get a bit of static to help pick, pick up the gold. Okay. Don't use water based glue. Oh, well that's too late. I've been using nothing but white glue. Uh, as water Based glue will ripple the gold as it dries. Well, that's not really a concern for me because it's going on the side of the um, lunar lander and that is all sort of ripply anyway. So that's actually working in my favour. Kieran goes on to say, lucky you're not my apprentice. Otherwise, I'd be asking a couple of serious questions. Oh, Is this really the line of work you want to go into? <laughs> Uh, use gold size and it's even uh, drying varnish or ply sparingly maybe with a cotton tip wrapped in a stocking just to contain the fibres apply the gold using the brush where the size is almost dry you may you may need to wait a couple of hours um, yeah so he, well he's really giving me some good ideas there about how to um, use it and I'm, like gold leaf well, here's the thing. When I've been cutting the gold leaf, I've been using scissors. And it's been driving me nuts because as you cut it, the gold leaf sort of wraps up and sticks to the size of the scissors. So I'm going to go and use the um, his butter knife and see how that works. Mm. And You've got, to get, you've got to get a chamois too. Yeah. And it's the frustrating thing about it is like, you know, well, it's still fairly cold weather down here in Melbourne. So if, if I've got the central heating on, every time the, it, the central heater fires up, <laughs> it, it blows the gold everywhere on my workbench. And even breathing too hard, it will cause it to sort of flap around and, and go elsewhere. So I've taken to wearing my mask as I'm um, actually cutting it and working with it. But um, no, thanks, Kieran. Uh, really Thank you very much for that. And um, he was actually kind enough to leave his mobile number, so if I really get stuck, I can, I can give him a uh, a call. But um, or, or, or you could also just jump on YouTube and just watch a video on applying gold leaf. <laughs> yeah, I could. Um, Kieran also writes in that he sent uh, this originally into the, but he used the wrong email address, and his wife said um, as she was helping him to resend the email that you're. Uh, bleeping idiot with technology <laughs> kieran i feel for you i struggle with technology as well i really do from time to time that and the english language apparently yes uh i see on our facebook page we've got a couple of messages about uh how i pronounce the qatari and suggesting perhaps i had the wrong grip on that side of the pronunciation ah it is what it is yep I say tomatoes, you say tomatoes. Potatoes, say, potatoes. And I say little red balls of evil. Why can't we all get along? <laughs> all right. Oh, geez. Okay, so we've got um, some news in from the Falcon, but I just need to take a really quick break and top up my coffee because I need some. So we'll be back very shortly. <laughs> Okay, so I'm back. I've got my coffee fully recharged. And in front of us, we have some news from the Falcon. Yay. What's happening in the modeling world. So, hi, Dave, Ian, and Julian. Let's start out with aircraft news. I'm sure you have already spoken about the Border Models Lancaster 
No, we haven't. We're going to do that no, right we now. We will. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have anything to say about it that you wouldn't have said already, except to remind people that when they are convincing themselves that $750 is not too much to spend on a plastic model, they might want to factor in the cost of postage, which will be eye-watering. Well, gents, what do you reckon? I'll get it directly through B and A because I'm pretty sure they're going to be getting him in. I, it, it's astounding. I mean, because last show we had uh, Richard on, and this seems to be a, a a thing because the last time we had Richard on, well, last year, a couple, of, you know, what, two years ago, and um, he was dropping hints about a kit, and that turned out to be the Lancaster. And then we had mm-hmm. him on last show, and then this week, bang, we've had the news about the what seems to be the wing that wings X wing that wings Lancaster coming out being produced by border models. So, whoa. Do, 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 do. <laughs> well, I had a look at some CAD renderings this morning and wow, <laughs> it's all I can say. Wow. They yeah. have packed so much detail inside that thing. It is. Yeah. It is pretty amazing looking. Um, yeah. I'll, I was. I'm quite impressed with it. So, do we know it's going to be that sort of price around 700, 800 bucks? Well, I I read somewhere, um, and as you know, when you read something online, you can take it with a grain of salt. Oh, it must be true if you read it online. Someone was on one of the forums or one of the posts or pages, I should say, and um, someone was mentioning that they had spoken to the GM of Border Models, and he has stated that he has not. Put a price out yet so all the prices that are going around at the moment is all conjecture mm. so it's, it's a wait and see well the only thing you've really got to go by is what the cost of um other um sort of kits in that sort of size are going for at the moment you know yep. like the b17 the b24 indeed the lancaster done by hong kong which is a which for, for what you get is a, a very decent price. Yeah, and the price but of the the, the 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 HK kit is nothing compared to to what this is mm. looking like. It's going to be. Mm. Not saying it's not a good kit. From what I hear, it's not a bad kit. It might have the odd little inaccuracy here and there with a the HK kit, but most people I know that have uh, built them are quite happy with them. It's just that the detail that um, we knew was coming with the Wingnut Wings kit, and of course now that Border Models has the moulds that's sort of carrying across and being produced. And we actually saw some shots, some test shots when we were at a... Um, had them in our hands. Yeah, had them in our hands looking at them um, all those years ago. Um, look, I, I, I don't know that I'd go and actually buy one. I think it's too big for me to actually have at my place i'd have to if i could to display it i'd have to hang it from the wall or from the ceiling and that's not something i'd want to do with a a model make, of that. A, <laughs> make a coffee table day no i've got nowhere to put the darn coffee table no no <laughs> julian's being particularly silent on the subject what do you mean sold silent silent oh silent <laughs> um like I, I don't Think Ian should buy one. Whoa! <laughs> oh, there you go. What? I mean, I buy one, and I'll get this. I don't think. Anyone <laughs> buy one. Julian, you know I'm stubborn, and you know that when you say things like that, you just got to push me in the opposite direction. Is that your no? no. What? I, I, I'm, 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 I'm not. I'm not doing it. I'm, I just don't think it's a reasonable kit to 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 buy. I mean, like you already keep the the Chica- uh, Chicago. Yeah. Yeah, you already keep that aircraft carrier in a bloody box, right? <laughs> this is this That's is even rare. worse. Yeah, it's quite rare when that sees the light of day. I've got to admit. Like this is you getting two of those, turning one ninety degrees so that four one four one's the wings and one's the fuselage, <laughs> and then you, where do you put that? Like like you said, the only place you can actually p- display it is in a coffee table or a museum sized. Um, display um, thing. 
Mm. Hey, while we're bashing in, it's, you got a very good point there, Julian, because he built a 148 scale Lancaster and he couldn't uh, have it at home because he had nowhere to put it. Well, let me let me put it this way: <laughs> if you weren't so, if, if you weren't flash hot on Lancasters to begin with, you shouldn't be buying this kit because that means you should have already bought the Hong Kong models kit and be somewhat satisfied with it. Because if all you're interested in is the level of detail, then you should just be waiting for what um, Katari or Cotter or whatever their name is called is going to bring out because that'll be, A, more detailed, right, and they'll be smaller and they'll be, and they'll be actually subjects you care about. Yes. So well, not, not to mention you <laughs> already have a 148 scale Lancaster that you've built and you didn't even keep it at your house. That's right, yes. <laughs> yeah, but then I can add it to my big collection of boxes like the Felix Stowe and the 135th scale U-boat. And... Well, put it this way. No one thought that it would come out under the name of a different manufacturer. So no. the fact that it has means that these things will be in circulation for quite some time. Yeah. There's no need for you to go oh, out yeah, and get yeah, one yeah, right now. I'm not, look, I'm, I haven't even said I'm going to buy one. Yeah, like inst- instant buys uh, for things that are going that you feel will have um, like a limited edition kind of thing to it, right? Right. Yes. So you know that's why I haven't bought the any of either the the Tamiya um, Datsun two forty ZG, and I haven't bought the oh that's understandable <laughs> the, the, the Tamiya Hellcat, right? The tank that was released, we mentioned last episode. Mm, yep. I'm not mm. going to go buy them because I know that if I want to build it, I can go out and buy yeah, one on Tomei. the day. Yeah, that's right. Because to me, they're, they're out. And there. this one's maybe not to that degree, but it's fairly close. Yeah. I'd have to call this then perhaps an enthusiast model rather than just a model builder. A fanatics model. Well, like, like, uh, Ian and I have a, an acquaintance who's just absolutely bonkers for Lancasters, mm. and I, I've no like he he. he I know for, I'm pretty sure he put he he has saved up to buy one of these things, and that's after having bought the HK models one because mm. it wasn't enough to just have one yep. gigantic thirty second scale Lancaster. It's, you had to have both. Yeah. Mm. He's a proper fanatic, right? Yeah. And so I would never try to dissuade him from from buying one. But this isn't, you know, noteworthy. It's not really within like Ian's wheelhouse, except for the fact that it's expensive. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, but the, it's it's not the finance side of it that's a barrier to me. Not that I'm, you know, saying I'm dripping with money, but I've I've never, with one exception, I've never sort of really balked at a price. I guess, it, for me, it's again, I, I I don't think I can ever see myself building something like that and then being able to display it somewhere that would, um, you know, be able to champion the model itself. So. I'll, I'll, I'm quite happy just to go to modelling shows and go ooh and ah over those of us who have bought it and built it. I think. Yeah, but the first, the first, the first limited edition batch comes with metal gun barrels. Oh, does it really? Yeah. Oh, that changes everything. I'm gonna buy one then. <laughs> <laughs> but the other, the, the flip side of this, and this is what people sort of really haven't picked up on, or certainly I haven't seen anybody picked up on, pick up on. So. Border models have either purchased, acquired, whatever, the mould. And we know that the um, um, Fokker tri, um, um, you know, triplane. triplane came out as well. That was from Mung. That was from Mung. So all the other moulds are out there, and I reckon that they're going to be purchased, picked up, and used you know, over the next coming five, ten years without any question well, at all. I'd say what, they're all in China? Yeah, absolutely. Mold, and absolutely. the Chinese have possession of them, which means the Chinese are probably having their own little bidding war to see who's going to be snapping up all the wing nut wing molds. And and the, no, owner, I, and the owner of... I suspect, that, that, I suspect that they've already had the bidding war. 
And then they're basically just going through the process of trying to get the the molding manufacturing correct enough to actually make use of the molds. Yeah. Because I don't imagine imagine there's some pretty tight tolerances for trying to get these things to come out yeah, without broken the, pieces and, 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 and things. Yes, Julian. They, 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 they were done in China. So they already have all that set up because they were doing the molding for Wing That Wing. Yeah, that's one particular company. But if another company purchases the mold, and just and Julian's correct when he says this, it's one thing to have a mold that, you know, is the B's and E's and everything. It's a completely different ball game altogether to be able to set it up, have the right plastic, the right pressure, the right temperature, all these variables going into it so that you're producing exactly what the mold um, is requiring you to produce. Yep. Mm. So any fool can just slap some hot plastic and squirt it into a mold. It's a proper manufacturer who can do it in such a way that it works properly. Yep. Well, obviously, Border has worked, figured it out then. Oh, look, Border models, you know, I've um, built one of their kits. I think it's an army kit or something I've got or built. And from memory, it's, you know, they, they produce decent stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's keep our eyes out on it. We shall. All right, back to what else the Falcon has to say. And he says that the Nuremberg Toy Fair might have been cancelled due to COVID fears. And the Shinkua, I got that word wrong, didn't I? Shizuka. Thank you. Shizuka Uh, Hobby Show went the same way. But the Russians are not weaklings like those in the West. The Moscow Childhood Expo 2021 went ahead as planned. And out of that... ICM and Sevesda were there and took the opportunity to make some announcements for their 2022 kits. Firstly, I'm, I'm hoping I'm hoping it sounds better in Russian than Moscow Childhood Expo. <laughs> it, it seems a little bit odd. I get what they're going for, but it sounds odd. Yeah. yeah. ICM and uh, why don't you call it a toy expo? <laughs> Yeah. Okay, let's start with what Sevesda have announced, and they're going to begin a family of MiG-23 and MiG-27s in 172nd scale, and they're also going to be doing a uh, Yak-9 in 72nd scale, as well as a Yak-9 in 148th scale. Oh, cool. Uh, continuing on, um, Sukhoi SU-25 in 148th scale, and a MIL MI-35, which is the export version of the MIL-24 helicopter, will also be, will also be done in 148 scale. Plus, apparently, a secret 148 scale project is in the works. And just as a guess, the Falcon is saying it's going to be an IL-2 variant. And, of course, on the back of Sevesda's uh, exquisite and wildly popular C-130 in 172nd scale, we can expect to see further variants of that in different models in 2022. Interestingly, ICM models also had quite a few announcements of their own, and they're also saying they're going to be doing a Yak-9, but in 132nd scale. Ooh. They're going to be doing a... Uh, um, a CH-54 Tahi, which is a Sikorsky helicopter. Uh, that's the actual military version of the S-64 Sky Crane. Very familiar to us in Australia where it's used as a uh, fire bomber, a fire yep. uh, attack helicopter. They're also doing in 135th scale the AH-1G Cobra attack helicopter, which interestingly they've already... Um, have a 132nd scale one of these in the works anyway. Uh, the s- That's weird. Yes. And they're also doing in 72nd scale, which is in competition to Sylvester, they're doing a family of MiG-23 and 27s also. Hmm. So you've got two companies both competing doing MiG-23 and 27s, both in 72nd scale. So- they're both Russian, yeah. For the one, so true, for weird. the for the one true scale builders out there, I guess you're in for some exciting times, particularly if you like Russian iron. Yeah, exactly. Sword models are soon to release in one seventy second scale a C twenty nine A BAE one two five dash eight hundred kit. I guess that's some sort of um, um, transport um, aircraft. They've shown box art and sprues. Um, so it can't be too far away. Apparently, the marking options are going to be USAF or um, Japanese 
uh, self defense force. So C twenty nine, it is a um, transport helicopter, a uh, helicopter aircraft, I should say. Uh, Micromir, the offshoot of AMP, have shown early CAD renders of a one forty eight scale uh, Sikorsky H nineteen S fifty five Chickasaw, which I think is the training um, air helicopter that was used by the U.S. Army. Don't start looking for this one in the shop soon. There's usually a very long time between the CAD renders and something that you can buy. It will come out, but you'll have to wait. Did a lot of helicopter stuff coming up because Clear Props mm. have confirmed their 172nd scale Cayman UH2A B C Sprite will be upscale to 148 scale. Yeah. Helicopters need to be in 48 scale. They're just too small in 72nd. <laughs> um, apparently, there's no idea when this Clear Mop, uh, Clear Props version of the C Sprite will be coming out. Uh, Model Spitz 148 scale Junkers W34HI is starting to appear for pre-order. They are showing pics of the kit contents so we can see that there's going to be two decal options, one for Lufthansa and one for the Luftwaffe. Hmm. Stransty kits have announced a 172nd scale mill Four PS helicopter. Geez, what's with all the helicopters coming out all of a sudden? Um, this one is different to the Hobby Boss kit in that it caters to the civilian version. It's got the square instead of the round windows. Um, right. Yeah, go on, you say something? No, I'm suggesting. Nah. Go Dora Wings have shown schemes that we'll be getting for their 48 scale Savesky P35 kit. Uh, there are going to be four options, which are all going to be U.S. Army Air Corps. Three are going to be overall natural metal, metal finish, with one in a War Games temporary camouflage. All four will have very colourful markings, as was typical of the time. And the box art is particularly nice too. Oh, I have cool. to say that the 30s for U.S. Army Air Corps aircraft has to be one of the most colourful uh, oh, the yellow period. wing, the yellow, yellow wings, wing, yeah. and orange wings, and I totally agree. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Even I've, the... got a, I've got a few thirty second scale kits that I bought specifically because they were yellow wing. Even the U.S. Navy um, with their um, aircraft or flying off the aircraft carriers, particularly colourful and very yep. visually pleasing to look at. No, they are. All right. So continuing on. Uh, we mostly think of Flyhawk for making terrific ship kits, but they have just announced their first aircraft kit. It's going to be a 72nd scale Douglas SBD-3 Dauntless. So they're still keeping on the naval thing. Yeah. They have shown CAD renders and what looks like a built-up test shot, and all I can say is wow, says the Falcon. Standout features a separate perforated, perforated, I beg your pardon, dive flaps in plastic. Very fine surface detail, which features raised rivets where there should be raised rivets. Fantastic reproduction of the bomb bay release of the bomb release gear, and a huge number of marking options, which will allow you to depict every aircraft from a couple of units. Also comes with a canopy masking set. And looking at the parts map, it might even have one of those fancy mouldings where they have clear and coloured parts on the same sprue. Overall, this seems to be a very impressive effort from Flyhawk. And if it's anything like their one seven hundred scale ship kits, it's going to be freaking amazing. Well, I'm just blown away. I mean, those perforated die flaps done in plastic. I mean, that's no in, in seventy second scale. Mm. In wow. See, I would I would have. Um, the only problem with with perforated die flaps on. Dauntlesses is to have them hanging down while the undercarriage down that's parked is really rare. Yeah. Yeah. You have to have it in flying um, configuration yeah. as if it's going into a That'd dive. Be a sort of kit you'd hang from the ceiling in the dive configuration. <laughs> Breaks out, bomb released. Yeah. So, so just using some um, uh, force perspective. So from your ceiling, you'd have the have it in a dive configuration and on your carpet, you'd have a 1700 scale Japanese aircraft carrier that's able. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> or you could just put like a maintenance person, little figure painted up next to it. Yep. <laughs> yeah, could do that. A little yeah. oil leak. 
<laughs> uh, all right, some announcements on the science fiction front. Mobius Models announced a while ago that they would be doing the Ares 1 moon lander from the 2001 Space Odyssey in 48 scale. They have shown pics of the built-up kit and it is now available for pre-order at some websites. Ooh. Military vehicles. Rifle models will soon release a 135th scale Stug 3 OS FG early production with workable tracks. Ming or Mung or whatever you want to pronounce it are showing CAD for a 135th scale Panther OS FG early with air defense armor. Copper State models are beginning their line of 172nd scale military vehicles with a Lancia 1ZM armoured car. Next release after that will be the British Lanchester armoured car. And Copper State models plan to release all of their currently available 135th scale kits in 72nd scale. Yeah, I saw some sprue shots of the Lancia this morning and yeah, they've done a really nice job to re because I've got the 35th scale one. Mm hmm. And yeah, it's like a, a copy of that, but just small. It'd be tiny in 70 seconds, girl, wouldn't it? So I don't think it's got an interior. I'm not too sure. I'd have to double check. Okay. Amusing Hobby have just announced a 135th scale Russian main battle tank, the T90A, with full interior. Whoa. Wow. Isn't that a modern tank? Like yeah, it really is. Modern. It is. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm surprised. I wonder how accurate it'd be. Well, well, because you really don't think modern military would allow a model company to go inside one of their tanks and just. Oh, start I, I think there's it. plenty of photographs around that you can see no. the interior of a T90. No. That's not the issue. The issue is, is you know, the the T90s are fairly um, well. It, it's there's not much to actually see once you put the turret on, and even with the with the hatches open, there's not much you can see in there. So. You'd have to, if you're going to do the full interior, and I don't know what the full interior is. Obviously, it must be a, an engine that comes with it, but um, all the workings for the inside of the of the hull, you'd have to look at doing an exploded view to actually be able to see it. Mm. So. Yep. Well, this um, is interesting to me because um, Meng already Meng already have a T ninety A. So do uh, is it Vesta? Yeah, I think Zvezda have one as well. It, there's a bunch of companies out there with with kits of this model. In a way, it's kind of like the um, the Russian modern P51 kit. You know, it's like super common. Everyone's got to tick that box. Mm, mm. Well, we'll just have to wait and see and um, what it looks like when it comes out. Um, yep. Continuing on, ICM are apparently doing a Ford A Gaz A truck in 124th scale. Oh, wow, that's huge. That's interesting. That's a bit. Well, yeah. it's 124. That's a normal car model car, scale. Car. Yeah. yeah, but doing the truck in it. So, oh, okay. Um, Zvezda have announced two new 172nd scale vehicle kits. One's going to be the Russian MBT T72 M3. And a German heavy tank, the Mouse. Okay, I wonder what's... Are they, oh, they're both in the semi-seconds, go. All right, fair yep. enough. Uh, Gecko Models have announced a new version of their yet-to-be-released 135th scale Daimler armoured car. Woohoo! Hang on for that one. And a Mark I sawn-off Daimler, known as SOD. Basically, it's your standard armoured car, Daimler armoured car Mark One with the turret removed. This is a fairly common conversion done to make up for store shortage of dingo and scout cars to compensate you for missing out the turret, Gecko, and will be providing some stowage parts. I'm hanging out for that Gecko's uh, Daimler. I really want to get my hands on it. That's all from now from the Falcon. Yeah, very interesting. Yeah, some great news items there. Hey. You guys get any new news and from the modelling world at all or any announcements? That you're nope. Yeah, I've been no, not really, no. I'm more of I, really. No, no, I was, I was going to talk about the new Lancaster, but we've already done that, so. <laughs> we have, yeah. And uh, I, I knew that uh, the Falcon would pick up on that, so. He's done well. 
All right, guys. Um, How about we take another very short break and uh, we'll be back to talk about um, movies and TV series that uh, inspire us. Sounds good. Back very shortly. So movies and TV shows that inspire us in our hobby. And this subject was sort of chosen by me because, as I mentioned at uh, the beginning of the show, I've got a new TV, which allows me to watch Apple TV, which means I have been able to sit through and absolutely watch all, or binge, watching all of For All of Mankind, which is a series about uh, the Russians getting to the moon before the US does, and it's an alternative history, and oh my lord, is it a great series. Yes, there are some inaccuracies in it here and there, but by and large... It's what if. What? It's what if. Oh, no, it's, it's a what if, what yeah. If. But, you know, by and large, oh, man, it's just such a, a wonderful show to watch. And what really excited me watching it was a whole heap of sort of models of, um, you know, different, the Apollo series, uh, the Mercury, the Titans, um, and even one of the characters, uh, Edward Baldwin, who's one of the characters in it, one of the astronauts, you see him in one of the episodes sitting in his basement building a 1700 scale aircraft carrier, which I love seeing people make models in movies. I don't know, it just really gets me um, really excited. But this, <laughs> <laughs> for me, this is just, you know, really sort of filled up my well of um, excitement, enjoyment about building real space subjects. And um, terribly excited there's going to be a season three which uh, kicks off in uh, the time period 1990s when the US and Russia sort of head towards Mars and sort of land there and do some stuff. So I'm particularly keen to see what sort of spaceships they sort of dream up for those ones. But, you know, movies and and TV series, they're a fantastic inspiration for um, us to build things, don't you think? I mean, you think of all those old sort of fantastic war movies that we grew up with, you know, like The Longest Day. Um, what, you mean like grab a whole heap of like old Tamiya pattern kits and paint them up? And them <laughs> <patterns>? <laughs> I was, was going to say a battle of bold, yeah. Well, even even doing that sort of, you know, it just really harkens back. And, and well, it, actually, can I just step in? Yeah. You look at it, there's already a kit coming out that's actually out in some countries. That is movie inspired, and that is the new um, uh, Grant kit for the Sahara movie. Yes, it even comes with the figures of Jim Belushi and the other characters. Well, you can also buy the Fury um, uh, Sherman. Yep, and there's figures available for the Fury c- crew. Do you mm. know I've never seen that Sahara movie? You haven't? No. It's fun. It's a fun movie. I've got it on. Blu-ray or DVD, I'll lend it to you. Yeah, you're gonna have to. It's a good movie. Yeah. I enjoyed it. It's look, the, the original Bogey one's the, always the best, mm. but the remake, I reckon they did, they did a pretty good job back in was it the '80s? I think mm. around that '80s, late '80s, '90s. I'm not too sure. And you got like you know, um, Battle of Britain, for example, it was done back in the '60s, and oh my goodness, you know, it wasn't that an inspiration to go and buy a whole heap of Airfix aircraft and build up your own sort of Battle of Britain sort of set when you're a kid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but with me, I, I, it's not so much movies nowadays with me. It's documentaries. Well, that plays a part in it. So I recently watched two documentaries, which automatically the first documentary I watched was on the Dutch Admiral, Admiral de Reuter from the 1600s and one of his exploits was sailing I think up the Thames with the Dutch fleet um, sinking a few of the British uh, warships in port and taking in tow as a war prize all the way back up in front of the British's faces was the uh, their most favoured battleship yeah you gave me a real blood nose on that day and I, and I, I've just looked at it and I've, I had a painting up on the on on the screen I've just looked I've gone that would make a great little diorama mm mm um, and then I watched another documentary on the Imperial Japanese Army's naval fleet with their, and they're like little escort carriers and all sorts of gear. 
They had an amazing um, navy, actually, or not navy. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, technically a navy. Yeah. Um, Whatever they built, the 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 uh, the navy would then build something a bit bigger and better, so they could have the, the kudos. <laughs> this is our territory, boys. <laughs> And because I'm thinking, like you know, even that movie that shall not be named um, about Pearl Harbor. Um, <laughs> that shall not be named about Pearl Harbor. Yes, yes. Spoiler alert! It's it's called Pearl Harbor. <laughs> yes, the movie that shall not be named. Even that had some great, uh, you know, CGI scenes when you know one of the characters went across to, and and uh, flew with the RAF. And um, you know, shot down a German aircraft there. That was fantastic. And it's those sort of images, and you know what you see in the screen, that I find particularly inspiring, and really get my juices flowing to the point where I actually want to build something. Well, actually, there's a there's a good scene on. Um, I think it was the 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 first of the Narnia movies. Were actually showing the Blitz, and you're looking from bird's eye view. Yeah, really well done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're right. And of course, you know, there's um, there's there's not enough done on the naval stuff, but um, in recent times, there's been that fantastic movie that um, oh, Tom Hanks did, uh, Greyhound. Yep. Another, even, even though the markings on all the German U boats is very, very spurious. <laughs> yes, it is. And how they make and that. And there is no way in hell any U boat commander with a, well, with a half a brain in his head is going to be on the radio 24 7 taunting the British fleet. Yeah, exactly right. All he's doing is yeah. giving his position away. Yeah, yeah. He has yeah. But besides that, no, it wasn't too bad. I had a flail class Corvette and I think a tribal class destroyer. and along yeah. with uh, the Fletcher class that they were on. Yeah. And, of course, there's those fantastic miniseries that um, Hanks and uh, Spielberg did together. Um, oh, Banner Brothers. Banner Brothers, um, Pacific. Pacific. And, of course, the new one that's coming out soon, uh, The Mighty Eighth, which is all about... Uh, it's been coming out soon for years, Dave. No, it's definitely locked in for Apple TV, and I hate to sound like an advertisement for Apple TV, but it's coming out for... <laughs> Apple TV, and again, I'm terribly excited because I thought that they did um, really well with both of those TV series that they did, Band of Brothers and Pacific, and I can't wait to see what they do uh, with this one. They've actually started filming. There's an area in the UK where they've actually got a mock-up airfield already uh, that they've built, and some of our UK listeners might have more information on this. Um, they've got a couple of mock-up, you know, B seventeen sort of sitting there and everything as well. So, it's... you know what I'd like, Dave? What for a change to either choose a freaking Liberator or a Marauder? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's true. It's like model companies bringing out one hundred and nines. If you're going to do an American movie with bombers, it's going to have B seventeen. Well, I'm over it. Put something different in there for a change. I think the only time I saw something completely different I think, was that um, Unbreakable. For the yeah. Pacific 24. Yeah, Unbreakable. It was quite good. Um, then there was the... Um, oh. Well, they always did the Doolittle raid, don't they, with the B-25s? Yeah. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think of a good Martin Marauder movie. I can't think of one, I but... I say there wasn't one ever made, but I can't at the present moment. I can't think of one. But um, I'm just thinking of the remake of the movie uh, where they had the B-25s flying out of Italy. Oh, come on. It's a it's a classic movie. Catch-22, Dave. Yes, the TV series of uh, the Catch-22 um, that ran for about six episodes. Um, that was a lot of sort of B-25 footage, which, you know, got me drooling. <laughs> oh, jeez. But even things like, you know... Classic movies like The Bridge Over the River Kwai. I mean, I remember as a kid getting a whole heap of um, icy pole sticks and trying to uh, and replicating the bridge. Did you end up setting it on fire? Ah, uh, there may have been some fireworks involved. <laughs> <laughs> as those projects always ended up in our youth. <laughs> well, it was enjoyable from a number of uh, angles. Number one, I had to eat a. Uh, a lot of icy poles to get the sticks. And number two, it involved fire and uh, fireworks after I'd built it. (laughs) 
Yep. So it was yes. a lot of fun all the way around. <laughs> <laughs> um, a Bridge Too Far, another classic movie that um, surely it must have inspired people to build lots of models. Yeah, I wonder if anyone's ever built the train from Bridge on the River Kwai. Or the train from Von Ryan's Express, another classic movie with Sinatra. Yeah. You're not familiar with that movie, Julian? I am familiar with that There's one. lots of movies I'm not familiar <laughs> with. <laughs> and, of course, where would we be without Star Wars, Star Trek? And, oh, my goodness, let me tell you about the latest series also. Again, I hate to say yeah, like I'm mad for Apple TV, but the Foundation series, which has just been released. I watched the first. Also, you're going to talk about the news. They're going to uh, totally reboot Babylon Five with the original writers. Oh, I saw that. Never liked Babylon Five in the beginning, but I'm intrigued as to how it will be rebooted. It was a groundbreaking series to begin with. It was one of the first times I think they had a. I read a, 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 a something um, by that Michael Straczynski, which I probably butchered his surname. I apologise, um, but. That was the first time anyone had done like a five-year arc for a mm. series. They had a complete start and a complete ending. That was, they had the Mimbari in there, didn't they, from memory, I think. Mimbari's one of the races. Yeah, yeah, the Mimbari, yeah, yeah. the car fella. I can't remember. It was that long ago. Mm. And look, back then it was the beginning of computer special effects and the special effects didn't don't hold up to a candle what's out there now. But <clears throat> would, you, would you build a model of the Babylon 5? I would Ooh. if it was available. If it was, yeah, if it was available, it was a decent kit. See, that, that's the big problem about, like, uh, you know, I'm more, when it comes to making, being inspired to build a model based on, you know, visual media, um, none of the war stuff really interests me. Like, because they always get it wrong, you know? So the whole time I'm spending the time, like, sort of gripping my seat going, that's wrong, <laughs> that's wrong, <laughs> what are they doing? That shouldn't be there. Yep. <laughs> You know? yeah. or, or it's like some fictional – it's not even an actual, like, um, thing, you know. It's not like, oh, that that's like some fictional squadron or that's a fictional unit. And In which case, why would I build a model that's a fictional subject? But if I'm going to go fictional, I want it to be all fictional, you know. Yep. Bring out the sci-fi subjects. Why is then there's so few – except for, for Star Wars, there's, there's so few models of all those sci-fi subjects. But here's another thing we haven't touched on. Another another medium, just art. How do you mean? Art. There's certain artworks that can inspire us to go. Oh, that would look really nice as a model, or that would look really nice as a diorama. Yes, and I'm sitting here in the studio <laughs> looking across at a picture that you have lent to me to hang on the wall, which is a ME two six two with its landing gear down, being hunted by two Mustangs. Ah, with the JV44 D9s in the background chasing the Mustangs. If that is not an inspiring picture to then go and build an ME262 or a Mustang, I don't know what is. Mm. Absolutely gorgeous. Going on to the sci-fi bent, I would love to see manufacturers start bringing out some spaceships like from the Chris Foss design, Chris Foss's artwork. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. Like the Stellar Cow is probably one of the most amazing bits of uh, spaceship art design I've ever seen. I think that's slowly changing in the realm of uh, 3D printing now. Uh, We're starting to see that sort of stuff come through, particularly for the real space stuff like the, um, um, you know, Musk's um, spacecraft that he's building, which I can't think of the name of it at the moment, the uh, Dragon and all those particular ones. So that's slowly starting to come through. Um, but by and large, it's still unfortunately stays in the realm of 3D or even resin sort of manufacturers. You know, I, I, th- I think one of the actual big um, pushes behind 3D printing in the hobby space is uh, all the disgruntled people who want models of certain subjects, but they can't get yeah. it. And maybe not the real subjects because they're really hard to, to model, you know. Mm-hmm. It's really hard to model a certain plane. But you can get pretty close and pretty easy with a lot of the sci-fi subjects. Yeah. 
especially in the scale that you choose because some of those subjects are so large you have to you know do it in like one twelve hundredth scale otherwise it'll just be huge and and uh oh, look, too expensive oh, oh, there, there are a couple of ships from TV I would love to get my hands on. And I'm pretty sure I probably would be able to get my hands on at the moment. But actually doing it's another thing. But one is the Planet Express ship from Futurama. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that'd be fun. And another one would have to be the Rossinante from the well, Expanse series. The Rossinante is already out there. You can buy that. That's what I mean. You can get it. You can get it. I just haven't, don't have it. Well, I'm surprised you haven't what pulled I mean, the, yeah. I'm surprised you haven't pulled the trigger on that one. Well, maybe I will then, Dave. <laughs> you know what? I, I reckon that'd be a better fit for you than buying a Lancaster. <laughs> <laughs> I'll buy twelve of them then. <laughs> oh dear. Um. So as for me, I watch a lot of uh, anime, which is uh, you know the Japanese cartoons. Um. Yeah. I have. Yeah, don't worry, Julian. I grew up with Simba the White Lion and Gigantor, and I know all about anime. <laughs> Prince Planet. Well, I, I, yeah, well, I, I grew up with a lot of the nine, 80s and 90s uh, stuff of that. So yep. the newer stuff isn't really my thing. But so you're the, really the, looking forward to the Cowboy Bebop series coming out. There's a, there's a Bebop series coming out? Live action Bebop series, definitely. Is. Oh, no. Uh, it looks good in the so far, what I've heard. Oh. Is everyone's, they've got all the right characters. So it's not anglicised. So don't fear, Julian. It's not anglicised. No, I'm going to fear because it's never going to get. They're never going to get it right. <laughs> they're always going to get it wrong. Or if they can't even get real life history the, correct, the, 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 I don't have any hope for them to. Yeah. You know, where they have to redesign currency and all sorts of other things like that. I don't. I don't doubt that they will get it wrong. Yeah, but fair enough. Well, we'll probably get the other thing right. But the main character is played by the guy who plays. Um, Sulu in the new Star Trek series. Oh yeah, okay. yep. Movies. I don't know who that is, but anyway. But John, you picked up on um, a really good point about the anime stuff because. Uh, well, that's Gundam, Gundam, right? Gundam. Well, well, yeah. well, exactly right. I mean, you know, that's a what a four billion dollar industry or one billion dollar industry or something like that. It's huge. Yes, but it's it's important to remember that Bandai also have their fingers in a lot of sci-fi subjects in general you know they've got the star wars stuff obviously mm. but they also do they also do other things um so japan's equivalent of disney you know where they make movies for kids that are really high um production value and really well written stories and stuff mm. is um called Studio Ghibli, and they, they bring out a movie every so often, and all of their movies are consider, considered classics. Mm. And every now and then there'll be one that has like a, a spaceship or a airship or some other kind of ship of some kind in it. Porco Rosso. And, yeah, like, Porco Rosso. I, people, ever, you know, a lot of modelers would be f familiar with the with the seaplanes from that. Yep. That is and, 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 and beautiful kits. Uh, yeah, and, and Bandai bring out, you know, models of almost all of those. Mm. Mm. Yeah, um, I do have, like, the uh, the Swordfish 2, which is the little fighter plane racing, former racing plane from Bebop. I've got um, a mech type thing from another series, which is only two, but when you consider that I generally don't really build sci-fi. It's almost 100% of my collection where I've picked something that there's a visual media of. Yeah, I once built a one-to-one uh, -one scale face hugger from Alien. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I've got a meme of that somewhere where you get a face hugger and he's holding up a mask saying free face masks. <laughs> <laughs> I actually put wire all through it so it was articulated. I could bend it so you could, it could wrap itself around your face. And oh, you actually it. had one? Yeah, yeah I, said I built one. I gave it away because I don't know. Like, it was an old build, it was full of dust. And yeah. It was this vinyl material too. It was a horizon kit. So it was that vinyl, that soft vinyl. Yeah. Oh, geez, trying to paint that was fun. Oh, I can imagine. It's like, put special elasticated stuff in me paint no yeah. <laughs> oh 
Oh, geez. That's so funny. And, and the inside of it looks really, really, really not suitable for children. Yeah, I bet. I mean, the, the palm section looks not suitable for children, <laughs> I should say. Julian, you're going to say something? Um, so are, there, are there any um, sci-fi subjects that you wish you could get a kit? Yes, there is. Of? Yeah. I'll, I'll rattle them well, off. One of them, one of them is not actually a subject. Well, it's actually a, a cover of a sci-fi novel I've got at home, which is uh, a Highland one. Um, oh, I can't remember the name of it, but they've got a ship on the front of it and the ship is a main part of the storyline, even though the ship's got the worst name you could ever give a spaceship and that's called the Gay Deceiver. Um, but okay. it's, the, the, the shape of the ship and the, it's like gold and black and it just looks amazing. I've always looked at that and gone, one day I'd love to try and scratch build that ship. Hmm. There was a there was a computer game or a series about these guys used to fly sort of these weird looking aircraft and they used to like pirates in the sky or something. What was the name of that series? No um, idea, mate. And they had a, 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 like tell us more about the the source media. I think it was a computer game, and I think okay. it's still a um, desktop board game that you can buy and play. And you got these weird sort of shaped aircraft that are sort of based around 1930s, 1940s sort of aircraft with, you know, weird wings and, and canards coming off the front of the nose and and um, that sort of stuff. And I'm just trying to think. Oh, I think name. I remember that. Yeah, it was a computer game, yes. It was a computer a, game. What was yeah, it? and that's going the, like the, as you said, with the canard wings and. Sky yeah. Captains or something like that? Or, yeah, oh, buy yeah. something, but yeah. Yeah. But that inspired models. Did they actually make some models from it? I'm pretty sure there were. See, I would have loved to have some of those models. I reckon those look really cool, and it's different from uh, you the. Can, you, can get, you can get models of Starcraft, Zerg, and Space Marines. Oh, can you now? Starcraft series. Yeah, I've got a, I've got one of the Starcraft Space Marines somewhere in my collection. Huh. Well, you learn something every day. I got that because I couldn't get a Zerg. <laughs> <laughs> one of the Zerg. <laughs> really cool of me. <laughs> Um, gen- generally speaking, a lot of the sort of um, anime and sci-fi type stuff I really get into is stuff that ha- is really big on world building. So I don't really care about the story or the characters. I just want them exploring a sort of like universe that's been richly designed, you know? Mm. Right. So, yeah, I was really into Farscape. Oh, I love Farscape. It was a great show, great series. That was a great series. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and like, I, I really enjoyed the fact that, you know, they were constantly exp- like you know, in Star Trek fashion, exploring this sort of un- these unknown parts of space and various planets with unknown cultures and things. And while there's not really any ships in that series that I like, but that's just an example of the kind of show that I like and why I like it. And so. I tell them it was you- a pretty cool looking ship. Oh, what did Talon look like? It's like a little mean version of Moira, the mother yeah. ship. And you can buy Moira as a um, a resin kit. I'm sure of it. I'm sure I've seen it. Oh, that looked good. Mm. Jeez, if you, if you had some really, if, you, if you're pretty handy with an airbrush, you could probably do a paint job like um, it's just about to start off and do a big jump into uh, warp, whatever it is. Yeah, do. yeah. It starts yeah. to light up. Oh, yeah. I remember now. I, I, I found it. Yeah, yeah. I, I can see that. It's It's not bad. It's not bad. <laughs> they're, they're, I, I prefer, they're like, you know. They're organic looking. See, the, the thing is, in, in keeping with my interest in 80s, 90s sort of visual media, I was also into cars from that era. So I like my cars to look square and boxy, right? Because it screams of the future, you know? <laughs> <laughs> ah, so you, 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 wouldn't, you wouldn't go astray with getting a, uh, one of those Lotuses that James Bond drove. I've got a, I've got that model, the the one that, the, the one that goes underwater, not the one that go. I got the ver, the second boxing of that kit, the one where it's just the regular car. Yeah, because they actually brought out the, the 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 underwater version as as a model first. Yes, yes. with the intention of making a car model out of it later. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've got that. I've got the car model version of the kit, the Lotus uh, Esprit. Yeah. Yep. Mm. 
Um, so I, I liked my spaceships to look the same way. I like lots of boxy shapes and things. You know, um, well, one you thing that I yeah, I don't mind his stuff. I don't mind it. Some of it's it's a bit curvy, and that's okay. It's sort of it's half curvy, half boxy, and that's that's okay. Um, I like a bit more detail. I think on some of my spaceships, you know. Yeah. Because there's like sort of just general ideas and then there's like a general idea that's been honed and like, oh, I'm going to put this on it because, you know, he's actually thought about like how do you make something like this function, mm. you know? Yeah. Um, do you remember, um, what's it, Peter Jackson's studio, they came up with that Chappie movie? Yeah. Yes, and, and and then um, and then what's it, the, the Weta they they came out with a um, resin model of the big mech that's in that movie. Oh. Yeah, it's, it was really expensive. Yep. But that is a really good example of like a really like polished um, fictional subject. Mm. And then there's a, and there's a model of it. Yep. There's like lots of like you know like hoses on it and like um, heat sinks. Mm-hmm. I really, I really like that model, but uh, I wouldn't necessarily buy it because a, it's super expensive. B, I'm not that much of a fan of the movie. <laughs> and um, I've never seen know, the, the movie. The, the, I've never seen it. And here's, a, here's, uh, here's something quite interesting too. Just to throw this into the mix, there's also the thing where there's models that have now inspired media. Oh, uh, do tell. Sorry. Yeah, like what? Like uh, Games Workshop. Oh, of course, yeah. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the Space Marine movies coming yeah. out. Yeah. Even on different, and now they're getting their own. Guys at Games Workshop's got their own media outlet. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to see a mainstream movie come out or a mainstream TV series sort of based in that universe. That'd be pretty cool. Well, Not- there is. Well, at the moment, it's just lots of sort of fan base stuff and, yeah. and stuff that goes for about, you know, 10 minutes or something like that. I want a decent... Oh, no, no, no. Actually, Dave, you should watch uh, Hell's Reach. It goes for two, two and a bit hours. And it is absolutely amazing because it goes from gradual sketchy artwork and then it ends up with, like, the highest grade um, CGI. Oh, really? And as you watch the story unfold and, and the artwork change, yeah, it is an amazing experience. It's a great story. And you think that's all based off plastic tabletop gaming figures, which are little, mm. little basic little models. Yeah, yeah. I think somebody would be onto an absolute gold mine if they did a TV series of the Warhammer universe. I really do. They are doing it. They Games are Workshop officially having their own channel. Wow. Well, but having their own channel and just doing something CGI's against a sort of mainstream production house. Uh, I'll wait and see. I'll I'll wait and see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but what I've what I've seen because they've been advertising and they've been working on it, they've been showing snippets of what they're bringing out, and what they're bringing out looks very good. Okay, cool, all right, very top quality. Yeah, I'll have to go and do a bit of a deep dive in after the show and have a look. Yeah, but there you go. There's, there's the opposite. Mm. Plastic inspired film. Very good points. All right, gents, that's bringing us up to the end of the show pretty much. And uh, it's been an interesting and wide-ranging discussion. Before we head off, of course, feel free to write in to us and you can send an email to onthebench64 at gmail.com. Tell us about movies or TV shows that have inspired you. We'd love to hear about it. And, of course, if you've still got any weird recipes for food that involves models, that will also be interesting for us to have a, a read of and a laugh at, no doubt. Um, don't, yeah, f- great idea. <laughs> don't forget there's a host of other modeling podcasts out there and you can find out all about them by going to modelpodcasts.com to give you a full listing of all the other fantastic shows that are out there. And also and thank the list gets bigger. Uh, the list continues to grow, absolutely. And don't forget, um, if you'd like to help support the show, you can do so by going to www.patreon.com forward slash on the bench and pledge any amount from $1 per month upwards. Certainly all the people who currently have pledges and helping with the show, that is fantastic and we greatly 
uh, appreciative and humbled by it. It just helps us with the production and hosting costs for the show, which are not inconsiderable, as well as all the equipment that we need as well. So thanks very much to all of you. Time for a yeah. sign off. Who can we start with? Let's let's Ian go for Ian. Well, <laughs> Fire Watch is your friend. And hey. see you later, everyone. <laughs> Julian. Oh, uh, I don't know. Here we go. He's, he's going to rave on with a long monologue now look, about I, I, how he's see, not I, worthy and how he never look, thinks I, anything. I, 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 look, I, 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 could, I could spit out the same saying like Ian does every week, right? I could do that. I could just <laughs> default onto my it. previous one, the one about tools. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I just want to. I want to. I want to pick. Let's 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 see if I can pick something else up really quickly. No, I can't. <laughs> see ya, <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for being with us. We'll be back in a fortnight. In the meantime, stay safe and enjoy your modelling. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs>